I Bill, do. Bill, when is when is Bill never himself? When when Rachel's on the Price is Right. <laughs> anyway, welcome to a special edition of the Who That Temple on YouTube.com. I am your host, James from Big Easy, aka Fat Boy Five Hundred Four. Now, this is a special recording. I don't usually do recordings, but this is special. How special it is? We're talking the brand split. Now, I have two people on this call with me. First of all, we have the Bay Area MVP, known as Will. Will, how you doing? Brand split? Can I just get some cake and ice cream? But let's get the show on the road. Next but not least is a special guest. Really, he's not a wrestling enthusiast, but he, he watches wrestling often, and he knows what we're talking about. He is a writer. I don't know if he's on Bleacher Report, but it's Bill. Bill, how you doing? <laughs> doing good, James. Doing good. Glad to be here. Uh, Going to be a fun time. We call him Wild Bill, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so as you know... It was announced earlier today that SmackDown was going to be moved to Tuesday and there's going to be a brand split. Now, the date for the draft is unknown at the time, as known as this time. There's been reports that it would be the Monday before the live draft, which was the day before or the week before the actual time. Uh, which I think most likely would be this going to be the week before SmackDown goes live. Um, with that being said, um, first question goes to both of you. Who you think is going to run Raw and who's going to run SmackDown? So, Will. Uh, this is where it's all, as they say, good vibrations because ever since Shane came back, you just never get a dull moment. So I'm going to say Shane's going to run Raw and Stephanie's going to run SmackDown because the ratings since Shane has been running Raw have benefited people to be on TV and not have to go to the bathroom. So Shane to Raw and Stephanie on SmackDown, James. That's how I see it. Yeah, I feel like yep. I have to be there. Um you know, Stephanie's done SmackDown before. They might go ahead and let her kind of go back to her roots. And, uh, you know, like Will said, with Shane coming back, people seem to be more excited, uh, which has been quite interesting. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing that Shane stuck around this long after he supposedly was going to be out of WWE after he lost at WrestleMania. So, uh... That was a bit of a storyline swerve there, but yeah, I could I could see Shane taking over Raw and you know getting SmackDown Live. They want to build it back up, you know, get people excited that it's finally going live, and you know, Steph already been there and you know, the authority, you know, maybe maybe that's the way they go. I have to agree with both. Really, Shane running Raw and Stephanie running SmackDown is the most intriguing thing that could happen. Uh, you bring y'all bring up the point, uh, Bill, that uh, Shane was not supposed to actually supposed to run Raw, but the fact is is that now he's back, even though he lost to Undertaker at Mania. Uh, it brings it up. It's like okay. Is a swerve and it's interesting, pal. Now he's actually behind, quote unquote, behind the new era, where you have like Enzo and Cass, uh, Apollo Crews, and giving back people who never have the chance, a chance. Um, the question would be, is that with Stephanie, if she runs SmackDown again like she did originally when they first originally had general managers, will she go back to being a heel or will she stick with the face character? Alright, 
I'll go first on this one. And she, if we go back to 2002, if I'm correct on my year, is where Stephanie tried to develop her business and her professional skills on live camera and not off camera. And you can see the way, at least, how she did rating wise. I mean, look at the roster she had on SmackDown Kurt Angle, Undertaker. Uh, Kane, Rey Mysterio, Cena, etc. But going forward, 14 years later, I don't think she would miss a step. The only thing now I'm concerned with is going into the draft and how it pulls off when it goes live in July is two things. Which wrestlers are going to get drafted to SmackDown and can they benefit from it? So, do I see Stephanie running SmackDown a lot better? Yes, because like you said earlier, she's benefited, like Bill said earlier, she's benefited from it, she ran it, and she can hold on her own, and I think Vince needs to take a back seat. Okay, here's a question I would say to both of y'all. Okay, oh, Bill, uh, answer that question first before I go on, I'm sorry. Uh, would Stephanie benefit more as a heel or face? Yeah, I think they'll probably stick her... Keep her as a heel. I think they can go back to having you know, the one GM be the good guy, one GM be the bad guy. You know, kind of like back in the day when you know, Steph was the good GM and Eric Bischoff was the bad guy. You know, so that always seems to play pretty well. You know, the whole McManus is the fan thing. You know, be like, you know, who's going to run their show better? Uh, the fact that Stephanie has on the Twitter bio, I play a bad guy on TV. Yeah, so that kind of leads me to believe they may just they may keep her as a bad guy just so she can kind of keep that going and kind of play the character that's sort of opposite of what she is in real life, which makes it fun. You know, that's what makes it fun to watch, and you know. Depending on the roster she gets, watch what she does. Now, here's the question for everybody. There's been reports of this possibility of two champions, two world champions. The Intercontinental in U.S. Intercontinental is going to be on Raw, U.S. on SmackDown. Tag team on both brands and the women's title actually being maybe a one branded because there's the rumor of divas. No, oh, no, I'm sorry. Women's wrestlers are on one show. Thoughts on this? And I, uh, God, I'm gonna take a quote from uh, Around the Horn on ESPN, and I'm gonna sell this one, and I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. We all know that if you put one title on one brand, would be dull. This will not benefit at all. Why don't you just do a fair amount of um, women wrestlers on Raw and down? But keep the women's title on both shows because you want to make the brand better, not make it duller than it would have been 10 years ago. So I say, no, don't do it. Bill? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I think, you know, if you're going to do the split, and we always talk, they're always talking now about, you know, give women wrestling a chance. Well, if you split the women up, it gives more of the women a little better chance to kind of showcase the skills. You know, there's, we'll say less of the pie, or like more more of the pie for to go around for each person, I guess we'll say. And then, uh, you know, you can still kind of add to it if you want to, say, bring up some girls on NXT. Um, and then, yeah, you could do like, like you did in the old days of the title, have the chicken and being defended on both shows, that way everyone can still have a shot, but it also gives you a chance to kind of focus a little more on some of the girls and give them their own storyline so that not everything's kind of cluttered together. Question would be about the world title, though. 
That's a that's your ass off. Now this disappoints me very well. I did see that report on e wrestling news this morning. And again, this is where I put the blame not on Vince on this one. Because if you're gonna have Shane and Stephanie run both brands, they need to come to a consensus on how it's going to work. We know that Reigns is the champion. Can he deliver on both brands? Yes, it needs to work. Because back in 2002 to 2005, we had the WWE World Title, and then we had the World Heavyweight Championship. It went okay, but who decided to scrap that? Yeah, we already know who. Now, if you're trying to say the new era is here, as they labeled it in quotation marks, let Reigns go rush on on both shows. So I say let, let it go forward and don't screw this up. Bill? I think the thing, too, is that we're only about three years removed from the brand unifying the titles. You know, and now all of a sudden we're going back to the brand split. So, early on it would feel a little awkward to jump right back in and split the titles up again. So I think do what you did back in the day. Have the one title both shows for some time. See how it goes, and if you feel you need to have brand-specific titles, go ahead and do that. You know, or if it works with just the one title, you know, you, you can just roll with that. For me, going to the women's division, I agree that uh, the women's need to be split to two, to, 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 to the two brands. That they should have be all on one brand. The question would be we come if I think about the brand split of the old days, the first brand split that they did, the women's title was on both brands, but it became exclusive to Raw later on. The question would be if that were to happen, what happened to like a SmackDown brand? Would they be ever get a chance to fight for the women's title? Or would they do something to where they could create a title for SmackDown? The World Heavyweight Championship, I kind of have to agree and disagree at the same time. Because, as I say, originally, when they had the WWE Undisputed Championship, it was on both brands. And then, after SummerSlam, Stephanie decided to sign Brock Lesnar and keep Brock Lesnar on SmackDown, where Raw had no champion. Um, and it was weird that they put the title that you, that was supposed to be their title, the WWE Championship, the one that represents the WWE the most, on SmackDown. But at the same time, uh, as I think MVP mentioned, with Stephanie was that SmackDown was the better brand at the time. So you understand it. So they had to bring up a world title. Well, also because Bischoff, as you know, WCW, and that represented WCW for him. Um, so, but I think if you give a two world champions, one for each brand, I think it gives a, the person for the other brand an opportunity at a push someone like a Dolph Ziggler or a Sami Zayn, a Kevin Owens you can give somebody else a push with a world title because you think about this two world champions you give two people you basically say that these are my faces of my brain it gives more people an opportunity to become top stars for the brain. If you think about this, because if you just do the World Heavyweight Champion, 
five times out of ten, it's gonna be either Roman Reigns or John Cena decide to go fight Roman Reigns, John Cena. So if you get somebody else the opportunity, then I would say you know more power to him. And I can understand that too. Like yeah, if you have two champions, it does give more opportunity to people get a push. You just got to be careful about. Who would you give it to? Yeah. Because let's say this. I see I see people that you could give world titles to. You could give it to a Dean Ambrose, a Sami Zayn, or Kevin Owens, a Dolph, or, you know, AJ Styles. If they don't want to get take it off of Roman, give it to AJ, you know? Oh. All right. Right now, we are going to do a mock draft. Finally. <laughs> we talked about all of this, but the original question for uh, original reason for this recording is a mock draft. Now, we each got to give 10 picks. Now, uh, let's say this. We are going to take away the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. The women's champion and the tag champions. We're taking them out of the picture of the draft. Because if we keep, if we put a Pacific champion onto a, uh, onto a brand, it kind of is unfair. Unless it's the United States or Intercontinental. But to be good, we could put one, uh, we got to keep the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, the women's champion, and the uh, the uh, the tag team champions off the table, so everybody else is free game. I All right, will... James, put a coin up and call heads or tails. No, I already made my. Uh, I already did my lottery. All right. Bill is gonna start off our draft lottery. Our draft. Ooh. Mr. Bleacher Report slash. I like to do mock drafts for everything. <laughs> Bill, who would you put as the number one pick and which brand? And why? Well, I have the first pick, so this should be interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and take a guy that I'm liking going into this. I think uh, give him time to develop. He's going to... Gonna be one hell of a guy. I'm gonna take Deshaun Watson, quarterback Clemson. Oh wait, <laughs> wrong draft. Wrong sport. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on Raw because I feel like it. I like Shane, and we're gonna go ahead and take the man. As I said, we take out the World Heavyweight Champion, so Roman Reigns is out the picture. Not that man. I'm going to go with another top man. <laughs> yes, he's coming back from injury, but Ooh. he's going uh, to be ready. To, oh, I think. Me, number one pick right now, got to be Seth Rollins. Ooh. Ranked out of the equation, Seth Rollins is probably next. Yeah, he, he's... You know, the easy pick here would be John Cena, of course, just because it's John Cena. But, I mean, you know, for as good as Cena still is, he is in his late 30s, almost 40. Seth Rollins is still young. Um, and he's clearly been tabbed as the future of this industry. So, uh, you take Seth Rollins, you put him on Raw, you already got a solid stable. You can kind of, it's, like, it's like drafting Deshaun Watson next year, whoever the... Top quarterback ends up a strong nucleus to start, and he can build around. MVP. There's n there's no doubt about it. I mean, he lost his title at the house show. He had a tore ACL, MCL, the meniscus tearing his knee. Went through vigorous training, and he made his. President fell at Extreme Rules, saying that I never lost the title. A freak injury happened, but I'm back to claim what's mine. So my pick to Raw would be Seth Rollins, hands down. Hmm. And it's just amazing that you know the injury happened in November, 
here we are in only, it's just May. You know, it's only been like six months and he's already back. For me, to be honest, number one pick, it is hard. That is hard. And you know what? You're you're right. You're right. Because Seth Rollins coming back from injury, he's just the guy I think would be capable on handling himself on a Raw. Um, and I feel that you know, I think they want to keep Seth more on the on the main show to continue on that feud with Roman Reigns if he doesn't win back the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at Money in the Bank. So I'm gonna go with Seth Rollins also. Bill, number two. Jumping over to SmackDown, so SmackDown's got it. Seth's got to come back. It's going to be strong. That's kind of counter. Um, I think she's going to go ahead and we'll kind of go ahead and do what's best for business a little bit and see if she can uh, play to the fans. And we're going to kind of split up the shield a little bit. We're going to go with Dean Ambrose. <laughs> Alright. Oh. That's interesting. Why Dean? Again, I think, you know, another up and coming star. Really love to see Sadie Seth Rollins. And, uh. At least putting Dean on SmackDown will give fans a reason to watch SmackDown. Because that's really the whole reason, too, that they're doing live SmackDown is to kind of help boost ratings, get people to actually start watching SmackDown again, because, you know, you guys know with SmackDown being taped, you could easily search the results, find out what happens, and you don't even have to bother watching. Now, you know, you'll have to watch to find out what happens, otherwise you'll be lagging behind, but at least Dean gives, gives that spark. Start a fire, say. MVP? I like how intriguing Bill just said, let's split up the shield. But I went on a different route for my first SmackDown pick, and I'm going to go AJ Styles. And this is where I think Styles does not need to be around. Sorry, he doesn't need to be all around that catastrophe about the world title and Rollins again. He already has his issue with the club and everything and where it's going to happen from here. Plus, I think when Finn Balor comes up the roster, it's going to be interesting how AJ is going to go up against all three of them. And plus, AJ is going to need to change the venue anyway. And I think it's going to be beneficial him to uh, his out there. He'd be 37 years old and he still got some wrestling in him. So yeah, I'm going to pick a phenomenal one as my SmackDown first round pick. Alright. My first SmackDown pick, which is the second pick, I'm going to go the different route. I am going to go with the true face of WWE and that's John Cena. Now, with John Cena being on SmackDown, I also think that this will also be including the United States Championship. Because here's your thing though, even though it's John Cena and Stephanie has that little beef, SmackDown is basically, you bring it up, ratings. And what, how you bring ratings? You bring in the true face of WWE. And plus, SmackDown is where John Cena started. 
He's been he's been the face of Raw since two thousand and five or two thousand six. But I think I think he him being on SmackDown needs to bring the boost to the brand. So Bill Raw second pick, third pick overall. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of piggyback off you because. Um, you know, he, may, he may not be as big to be the number one pick on Raw, but he's probably going to, at this point, he's probably going to sit well as the second pick on Raw. Let's put John Cena back on Raw, get him on the flagship. Um, who knows, maybe he could feud with Seth over the U.S. title again. Yeah. And when he gets it back from Rusev, so that'll make for some quality TV. Would Cena be the U.S. champion at the time of draft? Remember, the draft is somewhere in July, so it's gonna yeah. be. Yeah. So, so you, so you put the U.S. title on Raw. Okay. Okay. Uh, MVP. Our uh, second overall pick to Raw would be someone that would keep the flow going if. Everything would not be on Rollins here, but most likely it will. So, this is where I'm going to say Cena is going to stay on Raw and he's going to be the second pick. Only because we all know he's Vince's boy. And that's been well known for years. But let's not get it twisted here, fans. Because how he started on SmackDown. Got the U.S. title. And WWF and E title, and then next thing you know, he goes to Raw. He's been the flagship for that for as long as we all remember. So I don't see Cena really going to SmackDown unless Stephanie pulls out of a business financial ace in the hole. But I don't see it just just yet. I think this is where Shane will come out. Well, you know. See, the would benefit on SmackDown, but, you know, he's still the flagship of Raw, so I'm going to say Cena for number two. Is Cena the U.S. champ? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. Uh, my pick for Raw, the second pick of Raw, is going to be a phenomenal pick. Let's see that. I'm going to say AJ Styles will be the second pick for Raw. Because, I mean, if you think about this, I feel that you need the you know someone who's popular on a Raw that's not named or try to be a Cena. Because as I said, if I put Cena on SmackDown, you need somebody that's up there. So and I think Styles is going to be that guy. He's going to be that up and comer, new, you know, guy that everybody likes a lot. You know, they try to shove Roman down our throats, but I don't think he is going to work. So I think Styles is going to be the new face of that uh, flagship uh, of the flagship show. That's if it's not Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns, and you know, just. It's, it's like very interesting because I had to have Styles in somewhere on at the top, like first or second. But I think second would be the best for him. Bill, second uh, SmackDown pick, fourth pick overall. I do like AJ Styles. Uh, you guys have brought up some good points about him. But uh, I'll go ahead and give someone else a little bit of love here and do a little bit of a swerve here and uh we'll go with Kevin Owens as the next pick for Mac I think uh you know again another another strong town working his way up uh you know Steph this could be where Steph kind of plays the heel part and grabs the first heel uh, you know maybe begin some feuds with Owens and Ambrose. So you got a little bit of potential there to start. So, yeah, we'll go Owens as the guy. Number two to SmackDown, fourth overall. MVP? 
All right. Well, uh, no competition here. Uh, KO to SmackDown, and I, if he gets away finally from Sami Zayn and starts developing his the road to KO Mania Part Two, as he always proclaims, then it could work. And as Bill said, he's up and coming. Still got some years left, and we just have yet to see if he'll actually get a legit run for the title sometime down the road. But I'm going to disappoint some of James's fans when I say this. Do not expect uh, KO to turn face until something big happens. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, KO, SmackDown, second pick for me. I am going to go... Oh, you go. Oh, you go with Kevin Owens also. Okay. I'm gonna go a different route. I'm gonna go Dean Ambrose for number four. Cause I, I, I have to, I have to agree with Bill. Cause you know, split up the shield a little bit, but at the same time, like Dean Ambrose could be like somebody where Stephanie was like, you know, she gotta pull the trigger on somebody. And she wants to take out uh, her vengeance on people, so the first two SmackDown people that I put, she could have, like, vengeance on, because, you know, she has the issue with Cena, she has the issue with uh, Dean Ambrose, kind of, sort of. <laughs> and, you know, Dean Ambrose could be that guy that also could become, like, a world champion if it's not going to be, if they do do two world titles on uh on each show uh, one uh, a title on each show um so Bill third pick for all yeah I think we'll go ahead and take AJ Styles off the board here now uh you know, slipping slipping through the cracks a little bit but yeah now is the time to still one of the most popular wrestlers out there and uh, you know potential match, potential matches between him and uh, Seth Rollins I think would be really fun to watch if you you know who's the crowd going to cheer for even though you know it would be a classic face versus heel but you know obviously fans are cheering both so I think that would be one of those exciting moments there Alright, MP, who is your third pick to Raw, your fifth pick overall? The Swiss Superman Cesaro. I mean, he's had his run. Oh. I think that now, this is time for the Cesaro section to rise up. Get your man a chance for the IC title or make a legit run for the world title. Make it happen. Cesaro never disappoints. So that's my third pick, the Swiss Superman. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, both you and Bill pick Cena for Raw. If Cena does go to Raw, most likely he's going to bring the U.S. title to Raw, which would make no sense at all. For me, this was a hard one for me. <sighs> Raw, I'm going to say the third pick for Raw is going to be Sami Zayn. I think this one is going to be those, like, it's going to be a very interesting one. But Sami could have an opportunity um, on Raw. If he goes against whoever's the U.S. title. Can you hear me? Yep. I got you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that just says that Zayn is going to... I think he has that better opportunity on the Raw than a SmackDown. So... Mm. Bill, your third pick for SmackDown? Yeah, this is interesting. I think, uh, 
got a couple of ways we can go, but yeah, I guess we're going to do Cena on Raw and figure he's going to be the U.S. champ. Let's go ahead and put the Intercontinental Champion on SmackDown. Yo, boy. Assuming he's the current champion at the time, which he very well could be, you know, if we're doing, you know, as of today. If not, oh well, but let's put The Miz on SmackDown. Let him, let him be awesome. If he's still holding the title, uh, Again, that could help SmackDown because you can see the Intercontinental title has uh, gained some value a little bit as of late. Uh, this has been performing well. So, oh, oh, my boy, the Miz. MVP? My third pick. SmackDown. No surprise. Oh, man. Sami Zayn to SmackDown, I think. Lately, Sami Zayn has good talent, always has, but I think a new venue, a new direction would, of course, benefit him, as long as he doesn't cross paths with KO again in my board. But I think he'll do well against other competitors, so I'll take Sami Zayn as my third pick to SmackDown. My third pick for SmackDown will be Kevin Owens, because I think this is the point in time where Stephanie's going to take advantage of, like, you know, uh, say, you, you choose Sammy, I choose who, someone who's better than Sammy, Kevin Owens. And be like, Kevin Owens hates Shane. And I think he has more respect for Stephanie than Shane, so I think, you know, him being the heel, I think he's going to go to SmackDown. And he's going to go, feel, he would go after John Cena in the U.S. title. It's going to spark up the, the Cena-Owens feud of last year. Uh, Fort pick for Raw. Go. Yeah, so I think Shane will uh, kind of go back to the new era focus here, go with one of the young guys. I, you guys have already picked this guy. I haven't. I'll go ahead and take him off the board. I'll go Sami Zayn here. You know, continue that influx of talent. Get those young guys in there. Start representing the new era. You know, like, like I said, this pain seems to, uh, it seems to be following here. MVP. My fourth pick to Raw is somebody that I know Shane has had an eye on for the last few weeks. He has been no less than great in his eyes. He's been getting better crowd recognition. So I'm going to go with Apollo Crews at number four. Ooh. All, and Ooh. I think you got to remember when Shane was running Raw the day after Mania, Nobody thought Apollo was going to come in. Ever since he's been on Raw, you know he's he, he's only five and one. He, his only loss was against Jericho. So you have to put something in perspective here. Is what the Shane seen Apollo? It's all there. It's the whole package. So yes, let's go for for the AC mess up Apollo Cruz to Shane's Raw. Mm. Shane's Raw. Mm. You know who I think could benefit more on Shane's Raw as the fourth overall pick? I think... I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go a different route. I'm gonna go pick a team. For this... Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm gonna... Ooh, ooh. I'm gonna go pick... The club. Wow. I have AJ Styles on Raw. So that could continue AJ Styles versus the club. I think this is the best way to say, hey, look, AJ Styles and the club, you know, they have their differences. Let's keep the differences right here on Raw. Have the new era, have all that. So I'm going to go with the club. Bill, 
short pick for Spectre. I think uh, back to Steph. I think we'll kind of go back to the heel thing a little bit, and uh, you know, who knows what the storyline between these two will be come July. But you know, you could always reboot it. You know, because they put on some good matches. We'll go with Chris Jericho. Ooh. Next pick to smack down. Uh, maybe let him you know, Kevin Owens a little bit. Get that, that team going against a couple faces. So. Mm. Alright. Okay. I was waiting for the to be gone. Well, since James wants to break barriers like the game of spades, I'm gonna go one better and you're gonna put Enzo and Kaz on SmackDown, like I said. The Enzo and Kaz, they're upcoming. All we need now is Enzo to pass that protocol policy. He's gonna do great. So you need the real, realest people in the room, how you do, except stuff up. And this is where I think they will way benefit, get that crowd's going on SmackDown. So if Stephanie wants to one, one up Shane, you get the best popular tag team from NXT, and you shove it down Shane's throat. So Enzo and Kaz with SmackDown, go. Hmm. I'm going to break another barrier for this next pick for SmackDown. I'm going with a women's superstar. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to go with the one for SmackDown. The boss herself, Sasha wow. Banks. She currently, she has injuries, but she will be back before the draft. But I think that Charlotte is the top women's wrestler right now. Under her would be the would be Sasha. So I think they gotta use hashtag give women's wrestling chance. And I think the revolution will go on to SmackDown. And I think uh, I think Stephanie has more interest in the women's division than Shane McMahon. So. Uh, build your last pick for Raw, the night pick overall. Most, like, most likely if they do the draft, I think they could do like how they originally did the first draft, which is 10 each. Mm-hmm. And then the rest will be on WWE.com or WWE app or on the network. Yeah, they, yeah, I was waiting to see if we were going to pick whole teams, since we are. Um, you know, I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm piggybacking off you guys, because I was considering these guys. I got to go with the end zone cast as well. You know, they're, they're just so fun to watch right now. Their gimmick is just really fun. You know, love the hype doing. I'm certified G. Yeah, and going cast to Raw. MVP, last pick to Raw. Last pick to Raw. Well, this is this is a no-brainer here. You need someone that's gonna go out there and do their thing. And I'm gonna go with the women's wrestler. And I'm going to go with Natalia to Raw. I am still going to vouch for the fact that she's well-deserving of that women's title. Granted that they're still on a storyline thing with her and Charlotte and whatever and whatnot on Ric Flair right now. But you got to give credit where credit is due. I'm not talking about Natalia to tell the dude, but I'm talking about Natalia, the woman's rest, who in my mind is technically sound when she gets in that ring. So, yeah, Natty. Last pick to Raw for me. 
For me, I'm gonna go with a. Ch I have to go with the champ. I have to go with the IC champ. I have to go with the Miz, cause as I said, it's basically Miz is gonna be all complaints like, oh, why was it I pick? Why was it I pick? I should be picked. Blah blah blah. blah. But, of course, uh, this is where I'm about to pick. I think Miz is gonna be down low in the real draft. I think that's ten, but we don't have time to do ten on each brand. But as I said, I think with Miz. If we keep in the IC title on Raw, that's how you do it. This is just basically how you keep the title on Raw. And Bill, the last pick for SmackDown for you. Yeah, I think we'll pair Miz since we have Miz on SmackDown and we're assuming he's still the Intercontinental Champ. We'll pair him with the guy that's been coming after his IC title lately. We'll go with Cesaro, the King of Swing. With that rivalry building SmackDown, see if Cesaro can uh, finally take the title. MVP, last pick. My last pick will be someone that I think has a lot going for him, but not well received. So this is my under the radar look. If and when he gets that recognition, he's going to turn some heads, folks. So I'm going to say for my last pick, I'm going to go with the one and only the man they call and not Sting because I know I'm what you guys are thinking about this is not Sting I wish he was still there now but I'm going to go with Finn Balor <laughs> not just because he's the NXT champion he will get called up and I can see a Finn Balor versus AJ Styles feud in the near future he's not, a, he's not the see. champion though I said he was a NXT okay. champion. Was. Okay. was. All right. But I think what you got here, one member of the Bullet Club was the founder and one member formerly of the Bullet Club that was a former leader. So i got to put that in perspective. So I'll say my surprise pick, the Demon Finn Balor. My last pick for SmackDown. His name is Enzo Amore, and he is a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And his partner is Big Cass, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. I'm going to go Enzo and Cass. I have to agree with you, MVP. I think they're going to keep, they're going to have them on SmackDown just to have the entertainment value. I mean, it'd be nice to be on Raw, but I think, I think something, you could see them on a SmackDown, basically. But they could also become a champ uh, over time, so. Alright, now, I would I said 10, but I would say any honorable mention picks that could be shown on TV. You can do one, you can do two, you can do up to five. If you want. Bill? Uh, Dudley Boys might be po might be possible. I kind of debated them a little bit. Um, I think a couple, couple women wrestlers are possible. You know, maybe Paige, maybe, uh, you know, like we mentioned, you had mentioned earlier, Sasha Banks, maybe Becky Lynch. You know, so, a couple possibilities there. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, sleeper televised picks. Alright. MVP? So my five supplemental picks, huh? Uh, There's something that uh, could you could see right. you'd be surprised like, huh? On the, you'd be on TV like, huh? Like sleeper, like what they'll say. That's what I mean. 
That's what I mean. Yeah. All right. I will see the club on SmackDown. I can see the Becky Lynch to Raw. I can see pretty much Zack Ryder one last chance on SmackDown. I could see pretty much. Wait, and I'm surprised that I did not have him in my top five. I will see Dean Ambrose to Raw. And just because I don't like him that much, but I think he'll benefit. My last pick will be the U.S. champion, Rusev Machka, on SmackDown. Alright, for me, sleeper picks, I would say, you know, uh, 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 Mitch, uh, Mitch Honorable with sleeper picks, I would say Paige to Raw, because I think, you know, you don't see much of Paige, but I think Paige could be someone you could uh, see get drafted to a brand on TV, because... Um, if it's not Natalia, if it's not Becky, if it's not Sasha, if it's not Charlotte, Paige is like a top five diva. Um, someone we haven't mentioned really could be a sleeper pick that he could be like uh, mentioned. Randy Orton, he's injured, but he can come back. And I can see him on a, on a Raw. Um... Rusev would be a SmackDown pick because I think Rusev is maybe go for a push, or he could continue a feud with John Cena. You know, I could see him since I put Cena on SmackDown. I could you could put uh you can have Rusev on SmackDown so he can go a feud with Cena. Sleeper, sleeper, sleeper. Dougley boys, yeah, Dougley boys, I could say it's a sleeper pick. And I could see them on uh, SmackDown also, because that's what some uh, brand that they were on. Uh, last person, last person that could be a sleeper pick that could be mentioned on TV. Lucha, 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 Lucha. I could see Kalisto also on SmackDown. Because I think Kalisto, Kalisto could oh, no, be like... Kalisto could be like that Rey Mysterio of SmackDown, like how Rey Mysterio was. So, that's about it, really. Any last words? Uh, yeah. Um, if this draft brand is to work properly... <laughs> And not without the minds of Vince and Kevin Dunn ruining it. I think this would be a total success. And let's have actual writers do real creative storylines. Not like those uh, backward monkeys that can't know what they're fucking writing for and what they're about. But yeah, um, I want this to be very successful. Really do. Interesting. Uh, definitely looking forward to it. Or seeing who goes where and what develops, what comes out of it. That should be fun. In the words of Eric Bischoff on Twitter, yes, I follow Eric Bischoff on Twitter. No, I'm not a politician, a politician like him, a Republican like him. I, I, I do follow him because he he does also mention some WWE stuff, but you know. Some stuff that people don't like, but here's something I like that he did say earlier today. It's all in the execution. To be truly effective, it would take time, creative, discipline, and commitment. If WWE can't achieve distant uh, attributes, both shows have their own identity beyond the roster, it can be great. That's what I agree about this show. 
he has he still have that sport creative mind. If done correctly, like how MVP just said, this brand split can be a great success. We could have two champions, uh, two world champions. We could have maybe even two tag team champions if they want to. Uh, but it's all in the execution. It is all. It has to be something where it intrigues everybody. Because you know how SmackDown currently is just like a like a little show. If SmackDown could be like a show, like how it was in the old days, like how, that everybody wants to tune in, then it could be an effective show. Now, there's a lot of people that we have mentioned that wasn't said, like Bray Wyatt, uh, the Wyatt family, Adolph Ziggler, and all that stuff. Who would two is your top ten to get drafted for each brand? Well, I want to know in the comments or. Wherever you see this video, Bill, where they can find you and what do you do? Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bill underscore Rossetti, R I C C T T E. I'm always tweeting there, chatting up football, any kind of sport or whatnot. Uh, I got my podcast going with Ian Wharton, the Gridiron Graduates. Uh, we're on a bit of a hiatus right now, but we should be back later in the summer to uh, start grinding through some of these teams again and getting ready for another season. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. It was a fun time. Thank you, Bill. Will, MVP, where can they find you at? All right. Well, uh, you can always find me on the WGS.TV page on Facebook with the Wrestle Gamer. I'm always also here at the Who That Temple giving James some ideas for his videos. And yes, yeah, starting tomorrow, I am San Jose bound for Fanime 2016. I'm going to try to take some videos and see if there's any wrestling fans and try to get something from there. So, you know, check it out. Buy the shirt. Buy the shirt. Oh, okay, NWO. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you can find me on twitch.tv slash fatboy504. I'm on my hiatus because I got work. Uh, I'm going to be... Uh, you might see me do some WWE 2K soon. Um, speaking of 2K, that'd be very interesting if they do the brand split and they already did all their stuff already. <laughs> Poor, poor 2K17 go. Poor 2K17. It's all fucked up now because of the brain split and news that just occurred. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Fatboy504. I do retweets. I, I put up some of my opinions on there. It's, rare, it's a rare thing, but you know, it's just mostly like retweets of sports and stuff and Bill over there. Um, you can find me on WGS TV and the Hardcore Wrestling Radio. And you can also find me on Lance Moss TV, which I was actually technically I'm on still right now, and I'm not talking. I'm there. But until then, um, I want to get drafted to Raw. Dang it. Well, yeah, by the way, I have a question for Borto before we end the. Uh, will we have a brand split of referees too? Will we have will we have the return of the SmackDown referee shirts? <laughs> Ed Hawk SmackDown, yes. Just kidding. <laughs> you know what, to be honest, I like those blue SmackDown referee shirts. They're different. 